the holy anthem rise and the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the skies let the mountains skip with gladness and the joyful valleys ring with hosannas in the highest to our savior and our king alleluia alleluia like the sun from out the wave Hello, my friends, and welcome to our little church. And let us begin our prayer now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we gather this day on the third Sunday of Easter, and our readings speak to us about the journey that each and every one of us takes in faith. And it helps us to see what it was like in those early days after the resurrection. So listen well to the readings. For it speaks about accompaniment. Who do we accompany and who accompanies us as we journey to follow the Lord? Let us call to mind our failings now and ask God's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. 
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you've handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a member be released to you. The author of life you put in to death, but God raised him from the dead on the third day. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the, the mouth of all the prophets and that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He, he is expiation for our sins and not for our sins only but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him to, is to keep his commandments. 
those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Lord, cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your gospel. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled and why do you question, questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and at my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous with, for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I speak to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets are saw and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that the repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning here in Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And my friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. These words, my friends, are taken from the Gospel writer Luke, and on this day may the Lord give you his peace. If there's one commonality that we find in the many readings that are given to us in the church's liturgical year during this Easter time. It is the journey of faith that so many undertook because of what they experienced. That journey at times was very difficult. That journey at times led into the unknown. The journey at times was very rewarding. But importantly, what the common denominator was for all this was people's ability to accept that faith is a journey. These readings this weekend give us a moment to talk about what Pope Francis often refers to in his writings about accompaniment. 
and how we accompany one another in our journey of faith and how important it is for us to understand that our faith life is a journey. And I don't think that's always been true in my life and it may not have been true in your life. As a child, I was taught the Baltimore Catechism and it was question and answer. As the Second Vatican Council took place, there was a stirring of people to come to understand the word in the sacrament. And as I've grown as a priest, I realize that there are many journeys going on and journeys that may not have any connection to mine except in that moment of faith. And that's what I'd really like you to concentrate on with me as I give this homily this weekend, is the whole idea of how we accompany one another in faith. Let's look back at that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter is very hard on the people when he says to them, there's been an ignorance here within this community. And what he's preaching to them is the fullness of life in Christ. And how do you make that journey from a point where you have been frightened, unaware, and not allowing the Spirit of God into your heart and mind so it became easy to hand over Jesus Christ for his suffering and death? Now, how do you move to that fullness of life? What are the stories that you need to tell? What are the stories that you need to appreciate in your life? Is there someone in your family that has been made safe after illness? Is there someone in your family that turned away from some addictive behavior? Is there someone in your family that is still alone? And yet, you know it's happening, but you don't reach out to them. These are all moments like the moments that were endured by that early Christian community. And their ignorance was built in that lack of faith. And here were the early disciples saying, come, walk with me. Who is it in your heart right now that you need to walk with? Someone that you may have distanced yourself from, someone that you need to care for. The early Christian community endured that, and I believe that we have the same here in our pandemic time. Let's take a moment to look at the second reading from the letter of St. John. It talks about saving us from our sinfulness. And this whole action has taken place for the forgiveness of sins. Yet how often people have put aside that wonderful sacrament that has been given to us for the forgiveness of sin. How often do we fail to say, I'm sorry? How often do we fail to seek forgiveness in a moment when we may have slipped up. John is trying to say to us, Jesus Christ has made a difference. And how do we walk along with people who remain in their sinful ways and don't turn away from sin, so to be filled with the Lord? My friends, who do you need to walk with that may be in a sinful way? How about yourself? When will you seek the forgiveness of God and the forgiveness of another. This is all part of what the early Christian community was all about. And then we come to that gospel reading. The two people on the road to Emmaus had just returned. They told the story about meeting the Lord in the breaking of the bread. And why were they so troubled? Why were they so afraid? Here was Jesus standing in their midst. And how did they gain strength to receive Jesus into their hearts and minds? It was the whole idea of those that accompanied them on their journey in faith. So what does that mean to us? Who is someone that has accompanied you in faith? Someone who took time with you to listen to your story and to point out what their thoughts were and to give you that helping hand maybe through a trying moment, maybe during a moment that was filled with joy. How important it is for us, because of these readings, to acknowledge within our lives those that have accompanied us on our journey, 
our journey in faith. There are a lot of stories that are told about the good things that are going on around us, especially in this pandemic time. We need to take them a step further and speak to them in words of God and in experiences of God. And we can do that when we accompany one another. My dear friends, as you listen to the end of this homily, I ask you to think about this one question. Think about your own life right now. And who is it that is in need to be accompanied by you? Who is the person that you need to accompany you in your journey? Don't let it go. Don't leave it on the shelf. Pray about it. And most importantly, begin telling the story of Jesus Christ in your life to another. May the peace of Christ be with you this day. We take a moment now to profess our faith in mind and heart, and let us say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, we now place our needs before our loving God. And the response to our petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church and for its leaders, for Francis our Pope, for Frank our Bishop, for all who lead and guide us in the church, for these let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the people of God, for ourselves, that we may take an opportunity to accompany one in faith, for this let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, for this, let us pray to the Lord. For our military men and women now serving for their safety, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are suffering because of the coronavirus, and for those that have cared for them, for these, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the shut-in, the hungry and the homeless, the pregnant teenager, the recovering alcoholic, for the family that suffers because of alcoholism or job transition, the abuse of this life or mental illness, for these let us pray to the Lord. For those that are mentioned in our book of healing prayer, that they may know the healing presence of Jesus, for this let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, and we especially remember at this Mass all our parishioners. For these let us pray to the Lord. And now you may mention in the silence of your hearts your own intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer, answer it if it is your will, and we ask this through Christ our Lord.
As I prepare this altar and the gifts of bread and wine, I ask you to think about your own offering to the Lord. Take a moment now to offer to the Lord your heart and mind and those things that you wish him to know. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It'll become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we present may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you more gloriously when Christ the Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the, we are all given life of the risen Lord. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the fullness, uh, in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the love of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you all, and my dear friends, let us share with each other some sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who with the Father and work of the Holy Spirit through death gave life to the world, free me with this most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me most faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happier we're called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You guys be under the lasting life. My dear friends, I ask you to take the time now to make your spiritual communion with the Lord. He is risen, he is there for us. How important it is for you to open your hearts and minds to his presence right now and invite him into your life. Take that moment of spiritual communion at this moment.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptibility of glory in the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, we continue to see more people coming back to church uh, after their vaccinations, and that is good for us and good for our community and good for all that take part in this community. Please remember to make your reservations. Uh, there are um, seats available every weekend. You can find that out by calling uh, the parish phone number and pressing extension four on Saturday if you haven't made reservations. But it's good for us to come back and be in the church together. And I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Enjoy this day and may the Lord be with you May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My friends, our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Now let us pray our St. Michael prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mm -hmm.